Hey everybody, I just want to welcome you um, to this page where um, we are going to do some deep discoveries with how Charlotte Mason did uh, music and movement. And the reason that I've combined these together in my studies is that when I went into the Charlotte Mason archives, I began to see in the PNEU programs that um, all of the books Mason was choosing for um, drill surprisingly had a lot to do with musical rhythm and movement. Even some of the Swedish drill books um, were to be um, used alongside music. And Mason actually even um, had some piano accompaniment sheet music that was to be purchased by PNEU schools and families to do music along with their drill exercises. And so I'm still doing research into this to find out if uh, Mason schools actually did all of their drill with music or not. Um, I'm not quite sure. I don't believe so, but I do think, especially in Form 1, most of the dancing and musical games that were done were done to music. And then there's also what is called music in the programs, and that's instrumental music, specifically piano. And in the early years, children would learn how to play piano through piano lessons using Mrs. Kerwin's pianoforte method. And then following that, in Forms 3 and 4, they would use, um, probably continue to play either with lessons or just play for pleasure. And they were um, encouraged to play the pieces of uh, that they were studying through composer study, either those specific pieces or others by that composer. And then um, in the programs, Mason also talks about music appreciation, which included uh, what we're familiar with as composer study, studying six works by a composer per term, but then also in the upper years, forums three, four, five, and six, which is middle school and high school basically, um, Mason was also picking books about musical form and musical history and those sorts of things under music appreciation. And um, sorry, back to piano just for a moment. Uh, they also started studying musical form and theory in middle school, uh, along with playing composer pieces by the composers. And then in high school, they were using more technical music theory books that are, are written in a living way. They're quite narrative, but they also instruct in things like rhythm and meter and um, reading, note reading and counterpoint and all of these harmonic um, effects and different things that uh, an older, more advanced music student would need to learn. And that was up in the upper years of high school. And then finally, the last musical piece is singing. And singing involved um, folk songs. It involved Christmas carols. It uh, periodically involved hymns, although we don't see that Mason actually put hymns under singing. It was under recitation. And the books that she chose for hymns actually were not music books. They were books that just had text written there. And so... It seems to me that the hymns children were learning were for recitation, and they were supposed to actually probably be said from memory. Um, I'm doing more research on this as well. During Bible time, the children did not sing hymns, and they did not sing hymns for singing time. Um, those are not scheduled until after Mason's death, and actually after after World War I, um, up until maybe like the late 20s, 1920s um, hymns were not scheduled for singing, but then um, in a in a, around 1930 or 31, 32, um, then the PNEU program started to have singing as a part of morning Bible time, kind of like a start to their school day. And there were not specific songs scheduled. Instead, it was just um, probably their more contemporary hymnal that the Anglican Church used, the Church of England. And um, I've, I'm guessing that they just sang a hymn to start their school day, but this wasn't probably something that was studied. So that's an interesting discovery I've made. Um, but along with singing, besides folk songs and carols, 
they were to learn um, English folk songs, but then also, which were their own folk songs from their country. So for us, that would be American folk songs. And then um, on top of that, though, they were singing first French folk songs, which was for their foreign language study. And then in upper forms, they added German folk songs and Italian folk songs as well. And those were to be done for their foreign language study as they added more foreign languages. And then on along with um, the, these different folk songs, English and foreign language folk songs, they also, of course, had solfa, which we see on the timetables. And many people don't know what that is, but that is solfege. Um, solfege is um, typically, I think, what the French call it. And it is a, a way of training the ear. It's ear training, sight singing, those sorts of things. And if you're familiar with um, the uh, sound of music, the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do is where um, where you most of you have heard those syllables. They also have hand signs that go along with them. But learning those different sounds and the way they uh, they relate to one another helps to train a student's ear to hear music well. And that's an important piece um, because music is so much a part of the ear that uh, young children need to have their ear trained first. And so my goal with um, these different posts eventually is to try to come alongside mothers to help them learn how to teach these things to their children and then also provide some video lessons or something like that that will help students. But that's kind of a long-term project. So as we build um, the website, we'll probably have a new website coming up soon that is specifically just for music and drill. And um, so I'm excited that that will be coming soon. But in the meantime, I hope that you can enjoy um, these different pages that I have built. and. Um, Please feel free to ask questions. If you uh, have any questions, you can um, contact me through the, the contact us part of my website, and hopefully um, this research will be of some help and a blessing to some of you. Thanks.